What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the Crack of Pack series today opening up a very special pack of 10th edition. I love this set. There's a lot of good stuff in it. Sitting at the top, we've already pulled this card out of our first 10th edition pack. Uh, we got a Crucible of Worlds, obviously a great card, happy to see that. Uh, just under that is actually an Uncommon sitting at $25, Goblin Lore. Uh, mostly down to the Hollow One deck in Modern, that card is like absolutely paramount in that deck. Uh, and then just under that, we've got both the Doubling Cube and Lord of the Undead sitting right around $20. Uh, and then a number of other decent cards under that. So there's actually a lot of good stuff in this set. Hopefully we get something interesting, uh, just like last time. Uh, but as always, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. Uh, so we'll do our best to pick a good pick one uh, in a draft setting. I will go ahead and say I am not the best at drafting. Uh, so if you disagree, that's perfectly fine. You can let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but we will go through every card, and our first one here is Festering Goblin. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. Uh, when it's put into the graveyard from play, target creature gets minus 1, minus 1 until the end of the turn. This card's actually a great turn 1, just play. It deals very well with early turn or early game creatures. Uh, it's not necessar necessarily amazing, and it's definitely not something I'd look to first pick, uh, but it's actually not bad. Uh, Crawl Worm is uh, a 6-4 six, for four, 6. Uh, vanilla creature, very powerful as a finisher in a green deck. Obviously this is a core set, so keep in mind that the cards are going to be a little bit less text heavy. Uh, there's going to be a little bit less going on than normal. Uh, but this is definitely a decent finisher in just a green deck, and definitely something I would look to pick up a little bit above the Festering Goblin. Uh, Avon Cloud Chaser is a 2-2 for 4. It has flying, and when it comes to play, destroy target enchantment. Uh, the enchantment clause probably isn't going to be super relevant, though there are definitely enchantments that you might look to destroy. Uh, it will probably have, you know, one in every four or five games. It might have some relevance. Uh, but it is just a 2-2 flyer for 4. Not amazing, but it's decent. Uh, I think I would rather have the worm so far, uh, but definitely not a bad card. Uh, Council of the Saratami is two and a blue for a sorcery, and it's just simply draw two cards. This is basically divination, uh, but uh, nothing wrong with it. It's not a card that I would necessarily first pick. Uh, divination and just sort of draw spells in general are something I like to pick up sort of mid to late drafting, because uh, there's always going to be a few of them in the pack, normally I would say. Uh, and I'd rather have some proactive cards first before I start taking card draws, so not super interested in that. Uh, Terror is a fantastic card for two. Destroy target non-artifact, non-black creature. It cannot be regenerated at instant speed. Interesting art as well. Uh, this card is fantastic. It's basically premier removal in this set. Uh, yes, it doesn't hit artifacts or black creatures, but that still hits the majority, and you're almost always going to be at least two colors, so you'll probably be able to hit something in everybody's deck. Uh, so I do like that quite a lot. Cloud Sprite is a 1-1 one, one for 1 blue. It has flying, and it can only block creatures with flying. Uh, this is fine. It's not very amazing. Um, the art's actually really cool with the island in the background. I like that, but um, I don't really like this card. I think if you were in a blue deck and you needed a one or just one or two slots in the early game, this is fine, uh, but it's certainly not a first pick. Terramorphic Expanse is a land... You can tap it and sacrifice it to pull a basic land card from your deck and put it into play tapped. Uh, and then, of course, you shuffle your library. This card is perfectly fine as a fixer. I would not first pick it ever, uh, but it's definitely worthwhile to pick up a couple of these if you do end up especially in three color. But even in a two color deck, playing one or two is not a bad thing. Uh, Pincher Beetles is a 3-1 for three with Shroud. Uh, so it can't be the target of spells or abilities on either side. So this is not Hexproof, this is Shroud. Def definitely very different. Uh, Hexproof is basically you can target it, Shroud nobody can. This card is actually pretty good, I would imagine. Uh, it's definitely easy to kill in blocks, but if you're the aggressor, this seems like a great card. Uh, I will keep it, well, on honestly, Terror definitely seems like the picks so far, so I'll probably keep that there. Uh, Plague Beetle is a 1-1 one, one for 1 black, and it has Swamp Walk, which means it is unblockable as long as the defending player controls a swamp. Uh, not a mechanic that we see much of anymore, but uh, again, this is just like kind of filler early game. I don't think it's amazing, but it's definitely not bad either. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 with some upsides, so uh, wouldn't first pick it, but not terrible. Uh, Lumen Grid Warden is a 1-3 for 1 and a blue. 
vanilla creature, not very exciting. I don't like one threes just in draft in general. Uh, they tend to get outclassed very quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, first uncommon here, Megram, uh, an enchantment for two and a black. And whenever an opponent discards a card, Megram deals two damage to that player. This is much more of a constructed card uh, to be able to deal damage based off of discards. It's definitely a powerful card, but I wouldn't necessarily want it in draft. Ooh, uh, this definitely outweighs terror. So Blaze, uh, sorcery for X and a red. Blaze deals X damage to target creature or player. This is a very, very good spell in draft. Obviously, it's a removal spell when you need it to be, and it's a finisher when you need it to be. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Definitely a first pickable card and one that I like very much out of this pack. <coughs> Excuse me. Rod of Ruin is an artifact for four. Uh, you can pay three and tap it, and it deals one damage to target creature or player. This card's fine. It's decent filler. Uh, it's able to pick off small things if you need it to, uh, and also deal a few points of damage to the opponent. I don't like it over Blaze at all, but it's definitely not bad. Uh, and our rare is Beacon of Unrest. It's a sorcery for three and two black. Put target artifact or creature card in your graveyard into play under your control and shuffle Beacon of Unrest into its owner's library. Uh, I actually think this card's probably really good. I don't know if I like it more than Blaze, though. Uh, it's super awesome because it's recursion and it keeps you, like, you can just reuse this card. So it's recursion of your creatures, but it's also self-recurring in that you always are going to have access to it. Uh, but I think Blaze is just more directly better. I think it's able to pick off anything that you need it to, as well as scale up and even potentially finish the game by itself. So for that reason, I would say my pick is Blaze, but by all means, feel free to disagree in the comment section below. It's perfectly fine with me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, make sure to subscribe, stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We have got tons of it for you. Hopefully you're enjoying it right now. Uh, but with that, I'm going to end this episode. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.